Hey, so I'm Sam Lisher. Uh, I'm the chief global teleport curator here for Hive and Panasonic. Um, we're here with Panasonic. Uh, we have curated and designed the content for this stand. Um, if we come inside really quickly, we currently have seven uh, 25K Panasonic units in the air. Each unit has a Hive media player inside. So we have the B-Blade Pluto inside every single projector up here, which we can see where the little blinky lights are. This technology is relatively disruptive to the, the, uh, the AV market right now. Uh, it negates the need for any type of media server and other playback engine to be kind of used here. So we have no, no physical control room for this show, whereas like a lot of the other things on display here will have multiple media servers, lots of high racks around. Everything you see here is what is running our show. There is no external factors. We're running seven projectors in, in sync here using uh, Hive's proprietary vSync software. This is kind of a front end for a PTP server sorry. signal. Oh, sorry, I just kept. Yeah, so we're running the seven projectors here totally in sync. Uh, this is using Hive's proprietary vSync software, which is a kind of front end facing factor for PTP. The HDMI signal on each unit is gen locked together and they PTP together between servers to keep uh, everything entirely in sync. What's really neat about here is we also have an Unreal Engine scene running on the floor. So we have a PC out the back with a beefy GPU inside and we are running a live scene of Unreal on the floor. This is then streamed via NDI. It's it interactive? Between two projectors in the air. Um, and what is happening, we're taking metadata from the pictures that are taken on the screen, as well as user uploaded content. We're spinning them, we take the, um, the country name, the country, the place, the city, and then the metadata of the longitude and latitude of the picture. This rotates the earth into the right place, lights up and pulses the country, writes the name of the place here, and then you get embedded in this kind of vista of where you are and then the kind of global teleported area on the floor. What we can also do is we have written an integration which I'll show you guys here. So we can scan this little little area here scan. and we can create a postcard so users can, can engage with the installation here. So we're going to do that now. We're going to upload a postcard. We're going to say yes. I'm going to take a live picture so you can see that this is all happening now. So if I take a nice picture, there's us. Obviously this picture is not the aspect ratio of this enormous screen. Um, so we're going to upload this now. I'm going to select a country we're in. So let's do Cambodia for something fun. This is going to upload to the Hive AWS server. We're going to hit send postcard. It's going to say we've approved this. I have a second app on my phone because I'm actually in charge of making sure it appears. And here's my, my kind they of, kind of like moderating the input. I am moderating the pictures. This is purely from a kind of sensitivity point of view. We don't want, we're using an AI engine to outpaint the image. So if you can see here, I'll put it up on the screen in a second, but we've got the picture that me and Nick have just taken and then the rest of it is AI generated. So we're gonna look at that, we're, you know, we're happy with that. There's no, nothing sensitive, no nudity or anything. So we're gonna approve that. Um, all of this is happening live on an AWS server. What's happening now is the world's going to rotate to that, the position of that picture I've just taken, which I actually put as Cambodia, which is quite fun. So that's going to rotate. Cambodia is now lit up on the floor and is written on here. And there's my picture me and Nicholas have just taken. Nice. From Cambodia. Where, where the sides go. are added by AI. Correct. So the sides is an AI outpainting tool. Um, something that's really cool here as well is the physical size and structure of this display. So the screen is roughly 16,000 pixels across by about 4,000 high, so extremely high resolution projection. The projectors themselves are output outputting at 3840, 2400, but what's really cool is we're actually playing back content, the native resolution of this screen. We did that by sourcing lots of really high quality footage. Um, some we filmed and some we, we sourced, like this beautiful Amazon scene. Um, did the edits together, put the music together for this whole thing, and then used Topaz to actually AI upscale to the full resolution. Um, I think you'll agree, a lot of this you know, works really beautifully. This, look, this looks as high detailed as I think the original source footage was on my screen, and we can get super close and, you know, there's no distortion, there's no kind of rubbish pixelation, it looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, 
there there's like two blocks that are together of wall or that's uh, that's actually not too important but uh the, the physical structure Panasonic built I think has this seam in it but it's a good reference actually what we're what we're actually doing is playing back two halves but not top and bottom we're playing back the left and right half so the high media player we have in the projector is capable of playing back an 8k 60 file obviously like I said before the screen is much higher resolution so what we've actually done is split it roughly in half with a bit of an overlap in the middle so the kind of left half left four projectors are playing this side which is one file and then the three on this side are playing uh, a totally like the other half with like i say an overlap in the center um all of this is playing back in sync like again look at this like this beautiful rhino that is you know even if i get super close you still see all the detail on it at this such high resolution i actually think some of this stuff is some of my favorite that we managed to do um the kind of this like yeah like, that is just crazy to see this, oh, this crazy up, uh, this high i've never seen the lines up, is up close beautiful. So, uh, this show, IFC 2025, is all about immersing the user into a new world. Mm -hmm. And definitely. it's kind of like the ultimate uh, experiment that's trying to make this happen. Yeah, definitely. I think the tech we have on display here and like the, the integration we have between Hive and Panasonic, but as well as Unreal Engine into Hive, and then our kind of own custom software to get the metadata from uploaded pictures and um, the metadata in the content we generated into Unreal is kind of generates a, an immersive environment not really seen before and I think people are engaging with it really nicely we're really proud of it um, and I think it's been a, and a really exciting project for us to kind of curate and, and put together and I hope everyone else will feel the same. So you are doing uh, AV over IP to sync them up or very how similar. Does it, so, how do they sync? Yeah, of course. So the files themselves are on each media player. So there are H.265 codec uh, rendered pieces of content. This is the blade? This is, this is the B-Bay Pluto on display here. It's the one that's been used? Correct. So this is actually down here, Hive's new one, which is the Nexus. Uh, this is capable of playing back 8K60, but also outputting 8K60 as well. Uh, something that's really, really uh, unique to this machine. You show how you put it in? There we go, yeah. So something that's unique to the Nexus is it has a 100 gig SFP port on as well, which enables us to receive IP over, over like IPMX or SMPTE 2110 streams. And from my point of view as an artist, using something like Unreal Engine with 2110 in sync between machines opens up a huge range of creative possibilities. Um, in terms of the tech of what's happening to keep this kind of playback in sync, as I mentioned before, the HDMI ports are generalized internally via the Hive software and they use PTP timing. Um, so we have what's called a queen worker system, very similar to how the bee colony works. So one machine is designated as a queen, which becomes the grandmaster of the PTP clock and all the others just going to follow it perfectly in sync with what that one is being told, telling the rest of the session to do. And they're ready to sacrifice themselves for the Hive. No, I'm joking, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. here is it illustrating a little bit uh, some of the examples of those that you yeah, were so doing? Yeah, so we're actually seeing on here, we have a live stream of the Unreal scene at the top of the television, and then we only show the postcards users are uploading for a short period of time on the screen, uh, which is really exciting, but we give them a kind of post preview shot here for them to be able to take You can put them together. a little bit longer? We could you put can them longer. load we, another one again? Let's do another one, absolutely. So. I'm going to scan the QR code one more time. I'm going to upload an amazing picture of my dog this time because that always, uh, that's always really amusing. And it's quite interesting actually sometimes to see what the AI engine does to, to animals. Um, let's find a nice picture of my little boy. While I'm searching here, you guys can enjoy the wonderful Vista on display. There how many is. loops so, do you have? How many? How much content is going around here in the loop? Do you have an hour of content? Whole bunch. Here he goes. So I found a nice picture of my little boy Norman. This is my doggy. So I'm going to press done. It's actually picked up the metadata from the picture that was taken that's embedded into here. So this one was taken in Chichester in the United Kingdom. The file then automatically is uploaded. So I'm going to hit send postcard. It's going to say we need to do some approving so as i showed you previously i'm going to open the approval center the fact that we're able to do this in real time you know in a room like this with up to 60,000 people is i think super impressive 
you know, that's taken what, about nice. 10 or 15 it's seconds to come back. So there's, there's Normie, I'm gonna hit approve. It'd appear over here first, so we, you know, the user, if they wanted to, could grab a quick picture of him here. And as I mentioned previously, the world's then gonna turn on the floor, which is happening right now. So we're gonna highlight Chichester, my home location. And there's my boy on the big screen. All right, dog, AI dog. All right, that's cool. Uh, in the next step, as you can get the dog to move around and to, no, I'm joking. But, uh, <laughs> one day, one day, And with the next AI, year. there's so many new year. opportunities Definitely. to generate stuff based on, you feed a little bit of data, it can create a whole universe. Correct, for you. yeah, so the, um, the Outpaint tool is actually really significant here because we're rendering on such a high, you know, high quality canvas. Users' pictures are generally, especially with an iPhone or an Android phone, are generally taken either portrait or 16.9. So we we kind of undenied about how do we overcome that in the best possible way. We thought about you know repeating the picture. We thought about doing a kind of blurred background on it to you know the Instagram kind of way of doing it. And then we came across this this AI outpainting tool, embedded that between the Hive's data flow setup. Um, and as I say, take a picture, upload straight to the Hive Cloud uh, AWS system. 10, 15 seconds, we've got that picture back. And we're here, we can put it straight back on the screen. You know, that technology didn't exist a year ago, for example. Is there anything that happens in the Hive in terms of uh, merging the different projectors, the calibration yeah, between them so, and stuff like that? Of course, so in terms of this setup here, we actually utilized um, the Panasonic guys, uh, super clever guys here to do the blending and the lineup physically in the projector. Uh, so they use their own Geomagic software to do the, the kind of 10% overlap between each unit and the color calibration um, internally. We could do that in Hive. Um, Hive has some really good and simple 2D warping tools, which kind of emulates the same kind of, you know, four corner warping or multiple mesh warping, and then soft edge blending between units. Hive also implements uh, VOSO calibration, so external 3D camera calibration, as well as Screenberry. So we can do some really, really complex geometric shapes, as well as, you know, flat screens and kind of complex curved shapes like this. Nice. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot. So I hope you see a lot of these all over the world. Yeah, definitely. We, you know, we're really proud of what we're showing off here. And I think it shows off the tech between Hive and Panasonic beautifully. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs>